Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this new crazy mother. This is Eat and Drink with Ali Hassan and Marco Timpano. The podcast where back of house Ali and front of house Marco talk food and drink. Heads up. These two spent decades in restaurants, so some mature content and language is bound to come up. Get ready for Eat and Drink. Forks up. This is episode three, and this is my friend Ali Hassan. This is my friend Marco Timpano. Welcome back. You've made the right choice. It's good that you're here. You've made the perfect choice <laughs> by listening to this podcast. Um, Marco, as you may know, is a guy who spills things. We've got, uh, we're learning. Just like the way we're hoping that you're learning, we're learning also. We now have a cover here, so anything spilled will will not make a huge mess. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to miss the sound of ice uh, and, and glasses uh, falling over. But, Marco, you know what? It's still going to be a good time. Listen, it's going to happen because you know I'm a spiller. <laughs> all right? So, Ali, you sent me the dish you made. And usually I try or my goal is always to have a cocktail that accompanies the dish right. that you're going to make. My right? dish is a classic breakfast dish. Is this a breakfast cocktail? No. All cocktails are breakfast cocktails. I disagree with you. you? I on. do disagree with you. Uh, I don't think off a Manhattan... I don't think a Manhattan on the rocks is a breakfast Ooh, Manhattan cocktail. Manhattan for some people, but those are people we call uh, uh, problem drinkers. No, that's true. Fair that's a, You're absolutely right. Okay. Well, no, listen. You drink. <laughs> if you're having breakfast, drink what you want. Yeah. And, you, and your dish is a partic- particular ethnic breakfast. So I looked up cocktails from that culture, and yeah. I couldn't find anything that I could recreate. Because yeah, predominantly Muslim culture. Well, anyway, true. that's but, one part of the problem. But, but no, you, get, you get Egyptians but, and Lebanese it, and lots of Christians out there. Yeah, and yeah. they do have, and I'm going to just say, Egyptians do have cocktails. Yeah. I just couldn't get the stuff that I would need to make a proper Egyptian cocktail. So okay. you know what I'm going to say, Ali? What are you saying? In a future show, I'm going to do an Egyptian cocktail. <laughs> All right? We talk a lot about future shows. We should probably mark these things down. Yeah, okay, Egyptian so. cocktail coming up. Wait for it. It'll be here. And if you're Egyptian and you have some great cocktail ideas, send us yes, that absolutely. information. Listen to the end of the podcast. We'll tell you where you can send things or go on our show notes. Yeah. But so I thought, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to do a classic cocktail. Okay. Because I'm like, when I don't know, I'm just going to go classic. And what I've decided to do is a Cuba Libre. Yes. Classic cocktail, often maligned in its simplicity. Oh, I, oh okay, okay. Because it's a simple cocktail. Too basic. And it's not a rum and coke. People right. will say rum and coke. No, this is a Cuba Libre. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, the lime plays a huge role in a Cuba Libre. Listen, eh? you know I have respect for you, and now <laughs> it's just doubled, okay? <laughs> that's exactly it, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the lime that's the key here, right? Yeah. And this is a cocktail that was from... The... I've, I've drank before. You know that, right? I've told I, you that I'm a so. drinker. Yeah. I know that you... <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. only that, but Ali, I have to say that it is um, a drink from the 1900s. Right. So prior to the whole, you know, U.S., Cuba... Yeah, well, so in fact, I'm a real sucker for marketing. And the name of this drink, mm-hmm. without having this knowledge that you are now sharing with me... Uh, just the name, I was like, yes. You know, I'm from Montreal, Quebec, and there was like this, uh, this time where this uh, prime minister visited from France, and he said, "Vive le Québec yes. libre, long live a free Quebec," and it stoked the flames of all these sovereignists and separatists. Um, uh, what's his name? De Gaulle, Charles De, De Gaulle, Gaulle did yes. this. Uh, so it's an exciting thing, also for some people. Freedom, you know, libre, libre. So I just love Cuba Libre. I love, I love the name before I've even had a sip of it. That's just ice I'm putting in the glass. Yes. And uh, every every piece of ice went in the glass. But notice that the this blanket that I have here yeah. is not going to be... Very... No, this, kind of, this blanket is a bit too puffy, actually. Yeah, it's, yeah. it may cause chaos. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a Cuban rum. I think if you're going to make a Cuba Libre, use Cuban rum, sure. Havana Club, and... I prefer a dark rum, but this is a light, a light, very light, if you will, amber rum or I feel like you rum. you use the salesman and the salesperson's tactic, SWAT, sell what's available today, right? I love that. I never this heard of that. No, you never heard about that? Okay, no. so in other words, you open your cupboard. You're like, hey, I know I would like a dark rum, but here's what I have. Well, no, I have, I have a selection of dark rums. Okay. I love Kraken. I've got one from Nova Scotia that was made. But I just felt with a Cuba Libre, if you have Cuban rum, use Cuban rum. Okay. And Havana Club is Cuban. We have another one. I think it's called Santa 
Santiago. Do Cubans not make dark rum? They do. They do. They do. They make amber rum. I'm sure they make dark rum too. I don't know offhand, even though I love rum, of a dark Cuban rum. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure our listeners are like, what yes, are please. This one, this one. This, yes. What is he talking Tell about? Us. What's Tell this us. guy talking about? <laughs> so, ounce and a half of uh, rum, Cuban rum. I think traditionally Cuba Libre always has a lighter rum. It doesn't have a dark rum. Okay. But once again, I could be talking way out of my ass. And then we're going to use uh, half an ounce of lime juice, which I squeezed previous. Yes. Some people will take the lime and muddle it to release some um, oils from the actual skin. Skin. Uh, yeah. Flesh, but I, skin. I don't love that. I don't okay. love it when uh, fruit ends up at the m- bottom of my glass. Mm. If I make it myself, great, because I know I'm going to wash it. But I don't know this bartender, what he's done <laughs> previous to making my drink. And I don't know how if he's washed these limes. I'll just do that. Distrust of society is yes. on full display right now. <laughs> so that's that's. So okay. you put lime juice in, then you squeeze, squeeze more lime juice, and we put a lime on the outside. Yeah, right? it's it's a half ounce of lime, and I don't know why I squeezed lime in it, but I just did because, as a bartender, that's what you're Sometimes used to. Sometimes you have a, a a wedge of lime in your fingers, and what are you gonna do? You're gonna squeeze it. It's like, uh, yeah, it's habit. That's not a spaceship taking off. That's the <laughs> cola I'm going to use in this particular drink. We're getting gassy in the studio. Yeah, which is not fun to be in the studio when it's gassy. Not, not this studio. But this is, uh, this is intimate. So that's the uh, that's the cola. Yeah. And then I have a straw for you. I'm just going to stir it. And the straw is not a plastic straw Yeah. because I don't believe in it. Feel free to use the straw or not. I can put it back in here. Cheers, my friend. Cuba Libre in the morning. Like a savage, I took a sip before saying cheers. I love it. I I love it. It's a simple cocktail. Yeah. It doesn't have much in it, but everything works. Yeah. I might have put too much lime. No, no, no. Absolutely no. Do not. uh, This is not a time for self-deprecation, my friend. This is a delicious drink. Have you been to Cuba? I haven't. You haven't been to Cuba? No. And in fact, um, the reason I went silent for a while, I was remembering my time in Jamaica where they... uh, where we were, the bar we were at, they didn't have. Uh, they had replaced the straws yep. with paper straws, which I think so is, it's which is great. Except yeah. it's a race against the, the paper, straw, right? Yeah. The paper is now going to dissolve, and you better finish that drink. And that makes for a pretty, you know, some pretty drunk afternoon. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, so you've taken all precautions here, and you've I gotten a, a nice metal, metal straw. straw. This is great. Yeah. You know, here's the thing too. It is Cuba in a glass. Because a lot of people think of the Caribbean and they have this impression, coconut and tropical and whatnot. And yes, while Cuba is that, it also has this uh, refined culture, Mm -hmm. which I find the Cuba Libre has. It's not trying to be anything tropical. It's not trying to be anything crazy. But what it's what is definitely being is there's a sweetness, you know, uh, rum coming from sugar cane, uh, coming from Cuba with the. With the sweet and interesting color of a cola and a little bit of lime, to me, this is Cuban glass. And I can only say that because I went to Cuba this year. Right. Otherwise, you hadn't been? I hadn't been. So let me tell you something that's going to make you lose a lot of respect for me. No, no. My, uh, my sister-in-law, uh, Pakistani, mm-hmm. but, or, uh, you know, originally, but um, an honorary Cuban. Uh, oh, really? Uh, like, like, she... she it's like there was some mistake might have been made. She should have been Cuban. All sure. the music is Afro... Cuban. She teaches dance class, Cuban dancing. Amazing. She Cuban art all over her home. All this kind of very much in Cuba. Into Cuba. The the reason I have not been to Cuba. We have my sis, My sister in law is a great resource. Will give us every single step of multiple different trips that we can go on. Sure. There's no spice in the food. Oh, I can't do it. Bring, I can't. Do bring it. your, bring own, your spice, own spice, my friend. Bring, bring your own spice. Yeah, I guess so. I have to. Because her Cuban friends, who are lovely, warm. Tanned, incredible, energetic sure. people. You feel like yeah. somehow you stereotyped in your mind that that whole vibe lends itself towards spicy eaters, and then you give them the lightest spice, and they're like, "Is this black pepper?" And you're like, "Oh man, dude, that, oh what happened here? Ah, ah, we're not used to this." Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my god, okay." And then uh, you learn more about the island, and it's yeah. like, "No." Well, there is that sort of Caribbean bias. 
of spice. And I'm just making that term up okay. as if I've written a book on Right, 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 right. Is this part of your thesis? It is. Yeah. No, but it, there, is a, there is a bias that, you know, so many other islands in that area of the world have these wonderful spices. You know what? But you don't find that in, in and Cuba. And I appreciate you bringing that up because that kind of excuses my prejudice right now. No, I don't think it's prejudice. It's an observation. It's just... But I'm making assumptions based on skin color and this kind of stuff, but it's because of what you're talking about. It's like so many islands and so many people who look like Cubans eat spices. So I'm stealing ice Why from Why are you Ali. doing that? I'd like you, to know. I know, because you're kind of like, it's like I didn't bring enough ice down okay. and I realized I wanted to do, make a modifi- modification on this trip. Okay. And I want to see what you think. Is this classic cocktail transferable when you don't have cola? In other words, can you make a Cuba Libra using different different ingredients. I, I don't know. know I don't know. Gonna find You're going to find out. <laughs> so here's the thing. I love the Cuba Libre because of the complementary. You've got the rum that complements the cola, which is sweet. And then the lime takes that sort of edge Sweetness off it. Off. Yeah, yeah. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to put some lime juice. I don't add that much. So I'm going to squeeze some lime in it. And I'm not going to make it too intense because I don't want you driving after drinking two drinks. Appreciate uh, it. In my house. So I'm just going to reduce the amount of... Uh, uh, Rum I put in it to reflect the drink I'm going to make. And this is just to taste. So it might not turn out well, but I put the lime in. I put the rum in. And now I'm going to use something that I think is vile, but you might have in your home because because you had a party and you had leftovers that nobody drank. Diet Dr. Dr. Pepper has reared its ugly head, my friends. So you have this in your house because somebody brought it to a party? And you yeah, just my wife had a party. and Who brings Diet Dr. Pepper to a party? Uh, you know, someone who clearly didn't want to drink it and dr- drank. Well, that's the weird part. You bring that if you're like, you know what, I'm going to, I yeah. hate Coke, but one drink I love is Di- Dr. Pepper. However, I have to watch my diabetes, so I take that. <laughs> Except it's a full two liter bottle. They didn't have a sip of it. Well, here you go. So I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to let you take the first drink out of this. You be ready for my honesty. That's You're going to be saying. honest on this, yes. like we always ask. Yes. Because it might be gross. Yeah. So let's see what you have to say. This is the drink now that Americans can go to Cuba. Yeah. That'll rear its ugly head. Oh, I can tell that it's not. No, you know what? It's not, it doesn't work. First of okay. all, I, I would like to try it non-diet, but but I still think it wouldn't work. You know, Dr. Pepper, which which I like. But, in fact, I really enjoy Dr. No, Pepper. it doesn't work at all. But it doesn't work with the lime somehow. Yeah. It doesn't work with the lime. I think Dr. Pepper and and rum would work. But with the lime, it's um, it tastes like uh, spoiled toothpaste. It something. tastes like medicine yeah, that's, that's gone wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's spoiled. You're right. I think I think the lime does not work well with doc, Diet Dr. Pepper. I don't think Diet Dr. Pepper should be used in cocktails. I think works with Dr. Pepper also. Yeah. But it was an experiment we did live here right now. I love it. And I appreciate you respecting the honesty that I brought to this. <laughs> totally. You just laughed down. You're like, I could see in your face. You were like, why did he feed me this? Yeah. I was, I was trying to find fine. better words. So I'm no. trying to be articulate. Speaking of feeding, yes, we're gonna go to your dish. Let's get it. What was the inspiration to pick this? Well, I am trying to eat better breakfasts. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, I, I always eat a pretty good breakfast. I'm not having pizza for breakfast or fried chicken for breakfast, but, but sometimes it's too light. You know, I go with a smoothie. Sure. And I'm like, oh, okay, this has a full banana. What's spinach. your go-to s- smoothie? Uh, there's so many, but here, here's a great smoothie for me: a full, a, a large banana, some spinach, uh, carrot and or beets. Okay. Frozen blueberries. And then a couple of powders. You no know, milk in that? Uh, it doesn't need milk. It doesn't oh, need wow. milk, yeah. You put a lot of ice, and you can put coconut water. Okay. Or you can put water and a few tablespoons of coconut uh, coconut mm-hmm. milk. Notice I go to... <laughs> when I think smoothie, I actually think yeah, milkshake. Think milkshake. <laughs> That's what I got that. Oh, oh, no ice cream? No ice cream? No milk? No, no milk. <laughs> Sorry no, about Marco. that. Okay. Uh, but also, sometimes you put like a little bit of peanut butter in there. You put some espresso. It's so versatile. The problem is I'm hungry in 90 minutes. Okay. And now it's 9.30, and I'm out on the road, and I am looking for breakfast number two. Okay. Which I have. And then I have breakfast number three, which is also called lunch. Right. And now I've he- you know, I've eaten too much, so I'm looking for something that will fill me up. Sure. So I leave the house, and let's say I'm gone for three hours. You know, my life is like yours. We have we have work in, like, some three-hour bursts sure, sometimes. Sure, sure. Ideally, you eat at home, you eat again at home for lunch, so right. you don't have to spend a four. And when I'm in a restaurant... 
easily I'm going to spend 40 to 80 sometimes just sitting there on my own. Like, so, you know, so I, I want to have something left for the family. Tell us what this breakfast so is. So this is a very filling, nourishing breakfast. In 2008, I was staying at this great hotel in Jordan. I love it. And I'm on Jordan. And I go downstairs. You, we've all seen the little buffets at breakfast. This was a, a buffet of, of various condiments. I love the condiments. It was like cumin seeds. It was fresh tomatoes. Amazing. It was fresh green onions. It was parsley, cilantro, uh, various spices, harissa, all these things. No and I'm ketchup like, to be seen. No ketchup. <laughs> so all these condiments. And behind the condiment is the, the pièce de résistance. So I'm like, oh, what is this? And it's this weird shaped bowl. And I look in it, and it just it looks like beans, like bean stew. Right. It looks like kind of like slop. And I'm like, well, this is a whole lot of... Hoopla for beans. Anyway, I try this. It is called Fool, which is an unfortunate name from the English perspective, but it's called Fool, F U L or F O U L, spelled foul. Sure. But Fool, Madamas, is, uh, is fava beans as a stew. Very versatile. You can put tahini sauce on it, oh lime, God. lemon, t- fresh, fresh ingredients, cooked ingredients. So the way I make it, and you're going to try it in a minute, my mouth is already watering, is I make it in a, a little bit of a tomato sauce with oh. harissa in it. But then you can also add fresh ingredients. So to traditionally it's not made with a tomato sauce? There's no this traditional. Your... It depends what part. You know, the sure. Lebanese will make it some way. The Syrian will make it some way. Fair. For sure there will be people who like how dare you put tomatoes into the fool? But I make it like a bean stew that can stand alone. Oh, as well. I love it. Okay, so you know what? Let me clear this yes. cocktail stuff and let's go to the fool. Okay, uh, there. Okay, that's out of the way. All right, talk to me. The fools are ready for the fool. There's going to be a lot of fool puns. Listen. There's no way around that. That's the way it's got to be. You know, fool. Maybe either way. You we're, we're, You know, I know a million. Uh, sayings with fool and none come to me at this no. very moment. A fool and it's something is, is soon yeah, yeah, yeah. departed. A fool and it's fool are it's soon, soon uh, are soon separated, uh, meaning that uh, we're going to eat this and it's going to be. So I've taken a picture of this. I'm going to. I think I'm going to. Please, because post this. Yeah, because this looks beautiful. It does look nice. Now, as I said, sometimes all. Beauty in simplicity. Now, it's great that you chose something so simple, the Cuba Libre. This is again so simple. Really, all you have to do, onions, garlic. And uh, and beans, okay, and water, and just constantly, you know. So now, so this the, is a, a protein power punch. It's a protein power punch. This is amazing. the great debate is something that I know you you know from Italian cooking, soaking the beans overnight right. versus using canned beans, mm-hmm. right? And I know uh, you meet Lebanese people who are like, I made my hummus with canned uh, chickpeas, and they're like, Are you? That's not real hummus. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, why do the committed. Lebanese have to be like that? Why? Why? <laughs> Come on, Lebanese. I'm kidding. I, I, no, of course. Sure. I mean, I'm talking. I just singled them out. But anybody with hummus, the Israelis, hey, listen, Palestinians. Listen, Italians will say the same thing. Right, right, right. right unless, right. unless. Your fagioli you, should have been. I've, I've peeled the fagioli myself. I'm yeah. not going to use them. It's like, guys, let's all just. Get along a little Let's bit. Let's get along and yeah. figure things out. But right? it's good that you yeah. mention these things because it, it helps people understand who you are and sure. why you are the way you are. Fair. Good or bad. <laughs> So are these canned beans? These are canned beans. Hey, listen. And I, I listen, man. You're gonna try it, and you're gonna tell me if you're like, no, I am resentful. You can taste that the these difference. Are, well, you, can t- you know. All right. Yeah, so can so I dig in? I love All right. It. I'm gonna dig in. You talk so that okay. we're not because oftentimes we're digging in at the same time. Ah, uh, man. Okay. Sorry, I had the spoon right to my mouth. Sorry, and I buddy. Decided not to. Oh, oh good. It's good. So it's uh, so what I do is I put mm. a little bit of tomato paste and a little bit of harissa in the olive oil, garlic, onions. Now you have like this kind of tomato olive uh, olive oil paste. Add the beans to that. Let them fry for about ten minutes, almost like dry. Mm-hmm. Now they've really soaked up the flavor of the harissa and all that. Now you add lemon juice and you add uh, a little bit of water. And you just keep cooking it. Keep cooking it. You know what's fascinating about this? Oftentimes when you think of breakfast. Yeah. It's very monotone in flavor. Sure. Eggs with a bit of bacon on or the side oatmeal. and bread or oatmeal. Yeah. Um, this, your your whole palate lights up because there's so many flavors going yeah. on. Imagine this with fresh pita bread also. Oh, like it's hearty to too. Yeah. 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 And then also it, uh, it's so well accompanied by fresh uh, flat leaf parsley or cilantro. What's or with mint. the mint? You can eat now. I'll talk okay, about it. Okay. I just, but I noticed that he's used mint. And I don't know if it's for baletza or if it's just... Part of the dish. And baletza, <clears throat> if I was to translate that from Italian, it means for beauty, just to make the dish look much more uh, finished. But okay. does the mint serve a purpose I'm going to tell dish? you something that's going to make me um, 
reveal me to be a little bit of a, an annoying snob when it comes to food. But we went to a restaurant years ago, my wife and I, mm -hmm. uh, in Chicago, where um, it was in, no Toronto. Sorry, this is in Toronto. The, the 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 plate was served on a pillow. The pillow was inflated with a lavender air. <laughs> the idea was that you get your face a little close as you're eating. There's a little bit no. of a hole in no. the pillow, so you get this. And I was no. like, I never want to murder there. everybody at this restaurant right now. You're, you're not joking. I'm not joking. I was so angry at that restaurant for years. However, however, you serve something in a ramekin like this. If mint is something that makes it uh, more delicious. Yeah. We're also lifting this to our face, oh. and, we're, and so you're getting a scent of... I'm not trying to be too fussy or a, like a, a complete maniac, but there's a freshness that you're getting before the food even hits your, your palate, okay. and I, I really like that. Okay. On top of that, you could you could tear this up with your hands, put it right in the and stew, it would and work, be right? Yeah. It's kind of like, right? It's kind of like everything on a buffet you should be able to eat. Yes. I agree with that on, in principle, with a food item. Don't put flowers on it if I can't eat the flowers. Yeah, because I'm gonna eat those flowers. Because I'm gonna eat those flowers, <laughs> yeah. right? Don't put poison berries yeah. on my food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I'm gonna yeah. eat the poison berries. Absolutely, you can't be halfway through a mushroom and somebody goes, "No, no, 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 those were just for decoration." Don't ever do that again. No, no. When I'm starting, so, I'm going in. Okay, I'm gonna call you out on something. You had a problem with these people putting lavender air in a pillow. I had such a huge problem. But you don't have a problem doing this for. I mean, look, it, well, this serves multiple purposes. Okay. That served one purpose only. Okay. This also is is beautiful. Uh, what is it, Bazetta? Bellezza. Bellezza. Yeah, you know it's, how you, uh, you call a woman Bella or yeah. a boy. Bello. Bello, sure. It's bellezza. So bellezza. It's, 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 yeah, a thing yeah. of beauty. A thing of beauty. A thing right? of beauty. And you you did. You made a thing of beauty here. Right? So, look, it's a brown it's a brown and off brown stew. Yeah. You want some color. And then so what the the, the company mints like the fresh tomatoes sure. and green onions, they do that as well. They also had a great flavor. I had mint. I didn't want to have like a whole buffet. How here. great is it that we have a podcast yeah. where you can't see or taste what we're talking about, but we describe not only the flavor, but what it looks like for our listeners. Oh man. I, I mean uh, but and, and we offend Lebanese people. And all in the, we've and done a we've done a great. This is a good episode three right here. We've really shown you know, who we are. Yeah. We've shown our true colors. You didn't spill anything. I, I also need you. to say this. Sometimes I feel like a, col a colonialist talking about other cultures' food in yeah. a way that comes from a lens of a you know white Italian man living mm. in Canada, right? Yeah. And I don't mean to do that. No, so, I, I personally hate when you do that. And you listen, <laughs> them to breaks. No, I, I, what I mean to do, I just want to address the fact that I'm not trying to be culturally biased because I love different cultures and ethnicity, and I love that we live in a multicultural uh, society and a city that really, in many ways, embraces multi multicultural uh, things, certainly in the food that we have sure. access to. So having said that, take everything I say with a big grain, grain of, salt, of salt, and if you got a problem with it, Sorry. Sure. Well, that's look, the only time I'm going to apologize. But this is for. the great challenge, Marco. Mm -hmm. It's not just you. Everybody e e talks as though there's such an authority yeah. on food, but food is also a very personal experience. And food, look, in the east coast of Canada, yes. there is a city, lovely city. They got their first Middle Eastern restaurant. It was a Syrian guy. The story behind this man I, is a I love these story. stories. The story behind this man, he came here as a refugee. He tried to open up a restaurant. The rent, he couldn't pay the rent. The community got behind him mm. and helped him. They campaigned the mayor, the cities to, 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 to make sure he didn't lose his restaurant. They so helped great. him to probably the worst food I've ever eaten okay. in my life. Hey. So now, now it's like. You but know, is it the worst because you are surrounded by Middle Eastern food yes. at any moment, and yes. you've had the yes. best? I've had great Middle. So Eastern perhaps food. people from that small town are like, "This is the best." This is the thing. and you can't. Well, this you... is what I'm saying. Yeah, I love the man's story. The food was uh, was I uh, was uh, I couldn't eat it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let me tell you this, just to to jump onto your Syrian refugee um, story. Mm -hmm. There in Thunder Bay, Ontario, there is a Syrian refugee who worked in a bakery. And brought his Syrian root baking skills to this bakery. And there were lineups around the corner to get his bread. And then he opened up his own bakery. Yeah. And now people are just like, you're never going to find bread this good in the big cities in Ontario. But here in Thunder Bay, yeah. this is where you're going to get it. And that's the story I wanted. That is the right. ending I wanted. You were in the wrong, wrong town, my friend. I was. I was. So the, 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 the point is that, um, you know... 
one person's mm-hmm. um, gem yes. is another person's, uh, you know, a home of uh, disgust. I'm at a loss for words. No, and you know, and just to just to keep plowing through this and just making things Please, even more let's messy. Kill this yeah, let's just kill this. Yeah, let's just kill this. Yeah. I was complaining to a friend that I had to go to a Lebanese restaurant, and I was like, I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if Lebanese is my favorite Middle Eastern food. I was telling my friend who's really? a, who's from Iran. Okay. Um, his name is Nima, and I'm sure he'll listen to this podcast. Yeah. And be like, why are you dropping my name when you're really dancing around racist yeah, kind yeah, yeah, of yeah. tones? But, anyway, more about Nima and this hate. So I was like, I'm going to this Lebanese restaurant. I'm not happy about it. I'd much rather be eating, and I don't know. I said, I think I said Israeli food or something else. Well, wasn't it a slap in the face when I had this Lebanese food, which was out of this world? This restaurant was so amazing. And I tell you, Ali, from start to finish, like it was like I just couldn't my body couldn't take how amazing everything I ate was. It brought me to tears. And I I Marco's red in the face talking about this. I called my friend Nima and I said, everything I said to you earlier is bullshit, and yeah. I'm totally an asshole for saying it. So that just can prove that there's not one thing that you're going to ever say is great or yeah. bad or whatnot. So Absolutely. Yeah. That said, if you eat ketchup with your scrambled eggs, you're a goddamn clown. Well, but besides that, I think we can all agree. That I once good. served pasta that my mom had made to some East Germans. So that's how long ago it was. Okay. I had some friends from East Germany that were <laughs> staying at my house. A lot of people listening are like, what is he talking about, East Germans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy turned to me and says, do you have any ketchup? And so I grabbed the biggest knife and I said, if you ever ask for ketchup on pasta in this house again, it'll be the last thing you say. Ketchup on pasta. Yeah. So anyways, it was just a cultural difference. And maybe in East Germany, that's what he had to do because they didn't have whatever they, they right. needed, but not in my house. Yeah. Everybody's, my house. everybody's got their own everybody's thing. Everybody's got their things, Listen, you know. It's what makes life great. Yeah, and hopefully um, by the end of our season, we will have come to some understanding and some way of dealing with these uh, these hedons and, and, yeah. and just completely reckless human beings and their mm-hmm. habits. Can I ask you this? On this fool, let's say I had a big plate of this fool. Could I put an egg on top of it? Absolutely. In fact, buddy, I forgot to tell you this. Oh. Another great thing. Don't is... clap in front of the mic. <laughs> This is my enthusiasm. I forget the basics here. I can't edit that out. Uh, <laughs> you take uh, hard-boiled eggs and you chop them into, you know, quarters, eights, and this is another like it's like eggs and food together. Amazing. Personally, a, a, a fried egg fried in a little bit of butter yeah. on top of this is that, the way I, I that would go. that for me yeah would be the end of the world. Yeah, it's so great. Great. It's so great, and this this these lovely bright. Intense, rich flavors stay with you. Yeah, and I could see how this would be a, a very impactful, great breakfast to start your day. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, thank you for Ooh. making this. Like, I feel like I get the best, best part of this podcast because I get to <laughs> drink my drink, and it's simple enough to 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 make. And you bring these wonderful, wonderful foods. I now, get I, a, I get an unexpected buzz first mm-hmm. thing in the morning, which is something that I'm not prepared for. Mm-hmm. And every time I'm like, this isn't so bad. I see why some people do this. Now, I say this, but the next part of our podcast is what I detest. I think you're saying you detest it, but what you mean is you love it more than anything else you've ever experienced. I, I really don't. I get <laughs> nervous. I don't like being blindfolded. Um, for those of you who are new to our podcast, this is the segment we call What's in Marco's Mouth. What's in Marco's Mouth? <laughs> I don't remember how the jingle goes. Yeah, it goes pretty much like, like that. that. Yeah. What's in Marco's Mouth? That's right. What's in Marco's Mouth? It's nothing dirty. We'll leave guessing, we'll leave messing. Let's find out. What's in Marco's Mouth? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and it's your torture device for me. Well, how did you come up with I this? Know, so I, I just want to so talk about how you came up with this before we get into it. Um, that is a great question. I I think uh, I mean you're a comedic was, genius. So, comedic like, genius is I mean there's some things that go without saying, but I believe <laughs> I was looking for something that would bring me joy and torment you, and I was like, but how do we do that in a food context? And then I, uh, I know as a, you know, as, as a as a man who spent twenty years uh, plus devoted to food, I find one of the most difficult things is identifying flavors, and it's embarrassing to okay. me. 
And I was like, I don't want that on me. Mm-hmm. Let's suggest that to Marco. And you, in your uh, absence of all wisdom, was, you were like, I, I guess, okay. And now we're doing it as a segment. And the thing that kills me the most is we would watch, um, what's that British guy where he yells at everybody? Uh, Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay's um, Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. And you know, they... On one episode, they'll always do, like, they blindfold the people and they make them try something. And it's like, yeah. is it a scallop? And it's like, no, it's calamari or something, right? Yeah, yeah. I would sit there watching that with my wife and, and I would say, oh, I could do that. These people are. This is it. And now this I'm forced exactly to do it. Right. Yeah. And I don't know if I can live up to the challenge. I but. hate wine tastings for this very mm-hmm. reason, you know, where it's like, um, you can really taste. What, Ali, what do you taste? You're a chef. What do you taste? Grapes? Like, I can't. I can't and then they go chocolate. And I go, yeah, I yeah, okay, sure, sure, a little cocoa there. Elderberry, uh, I, who fucking knows? I've I hate that elderberry. too. Yeah. And I hate it because there's a snobbery behind it. Of course. But we're going to do a wine episode where I'm going to make you actually see what how that's supposed to work. You will have your revenge. Yeah, I will have my revenge. I will have my revenge. Okay, I'm going to put on my blindfold because it's time. Here let's, we go. Oh, man, we're in this small studio and it is it is like a torture chamber pretty much, right? Uh, so a little bit. Works, so. It gets really warm. Now, okay, again, I'm blindfolded. I, I will say that the theme is simplicity. Okay. And um, oh shit, I should. This have, is very simple as well. I didn't. I have all that fool in my mouth, <laughs> and I, I can't reach. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna look at you, but I'm gonna just grab some water. Grab some water. Okay. Otherwise. Okay. I also want to tell you that you might have to wash that uh, this eye this uh, what is this called eye patch? No. Uh, what are these called? <laughs> What blindfold? These? Blindfold. You don't have to wash your blindfold. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it's my wife's makeup. Is it's it? Okay. It, yeah. I, I thought somebody find... had a runny nose <laughs> no, on the opposite side of the... I couldn't get it. I couldn't get the proper... If you think, with my horrible <laughs> attention span, I could ignore that crustiness <laughs> that is facing me right now on your blindfold. There was oh, no man. way. Okay, so first, let's let, let you smell it. Let's let yeah. you smell it. You might get it right from the smell. Again, simple. Oh, bright, uh, refreshing. I smell like herbs, like a... Like greenery. Damn it. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. That doesn't work. All right. Let's okay. open up, bud. Okay. All right. Mm. Oh, I know this. Do you? Yeah, you should. I mean, how can you not? It's <laughs> pomegranate. Yeah. With. Did you put something with the pomegranate? <sighs> it's in the same container that my cilantro was. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Like, it's that is pomegranate. A very every- good, that is a very good palate, Marco, <laughs> because you're tasting something that is actually not in there, really. You know, you, there's no green in here. No. Okay, I just need to say, cilantro and pomegranate do not go well. They don't go well together? <laughs> they don't go well together. Can I take my blindfold yeah. off? I got yeah. it, though. I yeah, got it. You got it. Well, got I mean, it. good for you. Pomegranate. If I can't do pomegranate, and that, and that was the test. This was the test to see if I stay, if I continue to come here and do this uh, podcast with you. No, you're... We're in! We're in. We're doing we're it. In it. Listen, <laughs> I just want to say that this is tremendous. I enjoy it. Not that segment, but I do enjoy discussing <laughs> something I love, which is food and drink with you. Like, I really do. I agree. Yeah. And um, I, I know that I've fed you before, and you don't, often don't finish your food, so mm-hmm. to watch you... Finish this ramen yeah. in a fool makes me feel like I it was all worth it You'd to wake up this You'd be a fool morning. not to finish there it. You go. <laughs> we could do that forever. Um, you're going to Montreal, and I made you promise that you're going to go to one of my favorite restaurants in all the world. And provisions. Not provisions. You, provisions. Yeah. It, there's a number behind it. Okay. You know, I almost hate to say it because I don't want it to be exploited or... or of course. You know, and it is a concern with the hundreds of thousands of listeners we have that they all go there at once. And well, but didn't didn't that happen with Anthony Bourdain, uh, where he would go and he would like say, "Oh, this place is great," and, and then he, come back there a couple years later and be like, "Man, it's not." It's, they expanded. They like, commercialized or like, their yeah, menu. Like it's or, just yeah. become become terrible. Like yeah. provisions, twelve sixty eight. Okay. Okay, that's the name of it. It's my favorite restaurant in all the world. You said one of the best eating experiences you've ever had in your life. My favorite restaurant in, like, I almost doubted myself because I'm like, how can my favorite restaurant be in my own country? Yeah. Because I've I've been all over. Like, I've traveled. I've been very fortunate. I've traveled all over. I was a tour guide in Italy. I've had some of the best meals of my life all over the world. Part of my job as a tour guide when I was in Italy was we had to go to these Michelin star restaurants and plan food meals. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And so I've had (laughs) and planned the food meals for our guests. And and so I've had amazing food. I've had street food that's been amazing. I've, I, you know, I could pick many different countries I've been to where it's like, this is such a great place. I cried in Austria one time. I had this, this food that was so amazing. 
and then I went to provisions, and it was just it was just another thing. Once you cry, what do you do? What's what's next after? Did you wet yourself in this place? No, I didn't. didn't, didn't, I'm waiting for the food (laughs) that'll make me wet myself. And you know the way I'm going. This is exciting, man. This is. I have a full week in Montreal. I'm going to make sure I do it. Please, because then I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to it. Yeah. You walk in there. There's a little blackboard with various ingredients written on it. Yeah. And then they say to you, okay, are you allergic to anything? Is there anything you avoid? And I said, red peppers I don't like and lamb. That's oh, not my gift. What? Not my thing. Yeah. Okay, good to know for me. Had no idea. I lamb. love lamb. I hey, know. more lamb for me. I don't yeah. have to share it with you. I'm okay with that. I'll eat it. Look, oh, okay. I will eat everything. There's only one thing I'm allergic to. Yes. Passion fruit. You should have told me that too before we got this thing started, huh? I'll tell you <laughs> I bring a, I it's bring episode a, three. I didn't expect. It. I, I bring a, a lamb that is marinated in a passion fruit marinade. Uh, you know, served on a red pepper coulis. I mean, uh, what the hell are we doing here? It's, that actually sounds nice. That's not bad. Okay, so <laughs> no, no, no uh, passion passion fruit. fruit. Okay, all these things are listed on this blackboard, and then they'll ask you that, and you're like, no, those are the only thing. Great. Do you want a five course meal or seven? Let's do seven. And they just bring you things out that have those daily ingredients. Oh, available. so there's no ordering a dish. There's no often. ordering. Okay. You okay. just tell them what you like, what you don't like. Yeah. And the fascinating thing was my wife and I were there. We ordered and we had a cocktail. And then he came back and he was like, would you like some wine with your meal? I'm like, no, we want another cocktail. And he was like, are you guys from Toronto? And I'm like, yeah, how'd you know? And they're like, he's like, people from Toronto, all they order is cocktails. They don't order wine. He's like, what? In Quebec here. Like, well, he just said like. What what we notice is people from Quebec and from other places they'll or, they'll always have wine with me yeah. with their meal, and you guys just seem to have cocktail after cocktail, which is so bizarre to us, right? And I explained it to him. I like I'm like I look at your cocktail menu, and you've got fantastic cocktails that I need to try more than one. I know what wine tastes like with right. meal, but I need my cocktails because sure, I, sure, I don't sure, know sure. about when I'll be back, and I want to make sure I try it. So I was like, ah, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. As a uh, as a mixologist mm-hmm. yourself, you're like, oh, let me see the work that the the, the genius behind this stuff. Totally. So yeah. I'm going to give a shout out to Pablo from Provisions, twelve sixty eight. Because w- sincerely, best restaurant I've been to. My God. All right, Pablo. I'll be seeing you soon. Save us a seat, huh? You heard it here first. It's not a big I'm place, sure. so you got to reserve. Okay, you got to reserve. Yeah. Okay. I'll There's so it. many great restaurants in Montreal, though. I, I it's not surprising yeah. that that uh, that it's from there. Where's the best place you've eaten at? I mean, uh, you know, it's one of those things. Um, you're only as good as your most. Uh, you, 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 when you're a comedian, you're only as good as your last set. Sure. For me, in my mind, it's like I can't remember the, the my whole life of okay. eating. Okay. But I can remember the last three weeks because it's so prep. But I I had um, just excellent food at Lorignal in Old Montreal. Okay. Because I was in Montreal week after week. I, a place called Barocco. Barocco is really something special, man. That is uh, that is to be to be done as well. Okay, Absolutely. so next time I'm in Montreal, I'll go there. You go there. The, uh, you eat foie gras. The, yeah, the, yeah, the foie gras pate. With the, it's just. I don't want to like it I as know, much as I do. Of course, and it 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 breaks a bit of my soul. So I don't seek it. Yeah. But when it's on a dish, I realize how much I do love it. And you know, <clears throat> you've been to those places where they're like, "Here's foie gras," and it's a ton, and it's like. Even though I love this because it's so intensely flavored, yeah. you should have given me half this yeah, portion. You much. would never say that about anything else. No, but you're but right it's... because you can't. You can overdo any rich, high-priced yeah. item. Like you can go crazy with truffles, and then you taste nothing else, and you're like, "This is just supposed to lift the dish and give give exactly. it that truffle flavor." You don't need to kill it with all this truffle. Yeah. Same with the foie gras. Absolutely. I've also been eating very well in uh, in in Whistler. Whistler is oh. a place called Alto that we went to. Oh, that was good. That was a very good meal, and it was a it was a prefix, you know. You order a couple. Of, and we had this this one. Um, it was almost like an amuse bouche. It was like a small. It was like your middle course, your your, your second course. Sure. But it was either there was like a certain type of salad, or it was a fried oyster in tempura. Oh man! Uh, sitting in some kind of a, a, a delicious oil vinegar, you know, a, a citric dressing almost. Uh, it was so good. Some of the best ways I've ever had an oyster prepared. And I've had about, uh, I'm going to say, 250 oysters in the last month. Good for you. I just, every, you just, I just seem to land in a place and then it's like a buck a shock or you got to yeah. try their oysters or you got to go here. I mean, who doesn't? I love, um, we go to a place with my wife and there's buck a shock oysters. Yeah. She just says 30. And I look at her like, 
30? Yeah. And she's like, oh, if you don't have them, I can I can pound the back. 30 is great. Like, 30 is a great But we number. always start with like at least 20. But <laughs> yeah. I, I've been to a place where she's like, we'll do 30. Yeah. And look at her like, we're not going to have anything else. She goes, I don't need anything else if there's oysters. I learned something uh that I should never do again. I went to a great place in Vancouver, Minami, a sushi place where they do a lot of the pressed sushi. You know this pressed? It's like a brick. No. No, you don't know it. It's great. It's like um, flame grilled and then often they have little slices of jalapeno, thin, thin slivers of jalapeno on the top. Excellent stuff. Oh, man. Yeah. So uh, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's like this pressed sushi, basically. Served like in like blocks. Uh, It's known for that. It was recommended by somebody who eats well. I need to go And there. I go there, and uh, I ordered edamame sure. and some other stuff beforehand. It's a waste of time. Yeah. Waste of time, waste of space. I agree with that. Uh, what am I doing? I can't, it's like I'm going to do that again. All you can eat sushi places. Yeah. Don't fill up with salads and bullshit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're here for one reason. You're here for one reason. <laughs> go for the sushi. I'm not saying you have to go to an all-you-can-eat sushi place, because we went to one on College Street that I won't name. Okay. But it, it was one of the worst experiences. It, I would have rather been punched in the face. Wow. It was so bad. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. Because here's the thing. It was, that's a real testament oh. to how bad it is. Just because it's all you can eat, folks, doesn't mean it's going to be good. Yeah. In fact, most likely it's not going to yeah, be. Yeah, of course. Look at how much sushi they give you. Look at the quality of the sushi before you decide to go. That's all I'm going to say. That's how sure. I'm going to end my portion of this podcast. I love the punch in the face uh, analogy there because it... Punch in the face after a week, it'll stop hurting. But you got to live with this pain forever, right? Yeah. Don't be a fool, people! Okay, back to our fool a theme uh, from the uh, from the meal. Don't be a fool. Uh, eat, eat, eat better. Eat better quality over quantity. That's what I think. I agree. Well, that's Eat and Drink with Ali Hassan. And Marco Timpano. Tell your friends about this podcast. And rate, review, and definitely subscribe to us. And we will be reading emails and, uh, and messages that come to us, uh, you know, in the coming weeks. And um, some of them will mock us, some of them will mock you, and uh, we'll just have a great time. I'm going to say this. If you're going to give us a recommendation for what's in Marco's mouth, in the subject line, write what's in Marco's mouth so I will not right. look at it. For Ali's eyes only, for go. example. Isn't that a James Bond film? <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> have a good one, guys. We hope you got your fill of Eat and Drink with Ali Hassan and Marco Timpano. Follow them on Instagram and Twitter at Podcast Eat Drink. Email them your cocktail and food suggestions to podcasteatdrink at gmail.com. Until the next episode, bottoms up.